Cassette 1. Side 2. Unit 12. Exercise 4. Speech work. Listen and repeat the phrases. Notice that here, of and them are weak forms and are pronounced of and them. All of them. Most of them. Many of them. Some of them. A few of them. None of them. Unit 12, Exercise 6. Listening. Listen to part of a radio report about young people who live on the streets and complete the information about Tina. Tina is just another one of the many young people who are living on the streets. She left home at 16 because her mother was an alcoholic. Now she is living in a large cardboard box underneath the main railway station in Liverpool. How old are you, Tina? I'm 19. And how long have you been on the streets? Not so long. About six months, I suppose. Have you got a job? Well, what do you think? Of course I haven't. So, how do you earn money? From begging. Most of us beg. Isn't it very degrading? Maybe, but I don't have a choice. Do you regret leaving home? No, never. I've learnt a lot on the streets. There are a lot of good people living here. I've got more friends here than I ever had at home. Do you want to stay on the streets? Of course not. I don't exactly enjoy being homeless. So, what do you want to do with your life? Well, first, I want to move into a squat with some other people. And after that? Hmm. Get a job in a restaurant, perhaps. Eventually, I'd like to travel abroad, but I can't see that happening. Unit 13. Exercise 3. Listening Dialogue. Listen and complete the conversation between Claire and Lisa in the shop. Which sweater do you like best? The green one or the brown one? Mm, I like both of them. <laughs> so do I. What shall I do? Why not buy them both? Mm, no, they're too similar. Well, why don't you get the green one with the sheep on it? Yes, OK, I think you're right. Unit 13, Exercise 5, Speech Work. Listen to the way shall I and shall we are spoken in these examples. Notice how the sounds are joined together. What shall I do? Where shall we sit? Now listen and repeat the questions. Make sure you join the words together. What shall I do? What shall I buy? What shall I wear? Where shall we go? Where shall we sit? When shall we leave? Unit 14. Exercise 6. Listening. Listen and answer true or false. It's Josh's last weekend before he starts his new job. 
He and Eva, his Swedish girlfriend, are discussing whether to go and see a film. Do you want to go and see the new Crocodile Dundee film? I've already seen it. I saw it in New York last year. Oh, that's a pity. I haven't seen it yet. It's very good. I don't mind seeing it again. Are you sure? Yes. The trouble is, I haven't any money, and my new checkbook still hasn't arrived. Can you lend me ten pounds? Don't worry. I'll pay for the tickets. But we must hurry. The film starts at ten to eight. Unit 15, Exercise 4, Listening. Now listen to a news report of the same incident and answer the questions. Forest fires, now in their third day, are still burning in the southeast of France. French police say that hotels and campsites near Nîmes and Marseille are in danger and they have advised everyone to leave the area. We have this report from Gavin Simpson in Marseille. Many British holidaymakers who were staying in this area of southeast France are now returning to Britain after escaping from the fires which have destroyed large parts of the region. One witness described the experience. We were staying in a small hotel in a fishing village not far from Marseille. At about three o'clock in the afternoon, we were sunbathing by the swimming pool, the hotel pool. We were only wearing shorts and swimsuits when the police came and told us to leave as quickly as possible. As we were leaving the hotel, we saw the flames in the distance. They were coming closer. The children were coughing a lot because of the smoke, so we covered their faces and heads with wet towels. So far, there have been many injuries, but only two people have died. The police say the fires are still not under control. This is Gavin Simpson, World at Ten, Marseille. Fluency, Units 11 to 15. Exercise 4. Listening. Listen and see if you were right about the other dolphin story. My dolphin story is quite simple, really. But I think I owe my life to those animals. I live in Detroit, but every winter we go to Florida, where my brother has a house. I love swimming, and the swimming is very good in Florida. But sometimes it can be quite dangerous because there are often strong currents which can take you out to sea. Anyway, one day I was swimming and enjoying myself when I felt the current pulling me. I knew that it was carrying me out to sea. I waved and shouted, but nobody could see me from the beach. I was getting very frightened. Suddenly, I felt something pushing me from behind. It pushed and, and pushed until I landed on the beach with my face in the sand. I got up and looked towards the sea, and there, there, can you imagine, there in the water was a dolphin. It was swimming around in circles and leaping out of the water all the time, just as if to say, look at me. Look at me! I did it! Preview, Unit 16 to 20. Match the text with the photographs. Then listen and see if you were right. 1. Be careful of pickpockets. 2. You aren't allowed to buy cigarettes if you're under 16. 3. You should wear a seatbelt even if you are sitting in the back seat. 4. Van Gogh was only 37 when he died. 5. There aren't enough trains during the rush hour.
Unit 16, Exercise 1, Dialogue. Listen and choose the right answer. Ah, it's nice to be back. What's on TV this evening? Well, there's a documentary about famine. Another one? Bob, how can you say that? Well, in my opinion, there are too many programs on famine and not enough action. What do you mean, not enough action? Look, the situation has been the same for years now. There still isn't enough food in Africa, but there's plenty in the rest of the world. In fact, there's too much in some countries. OK, so what do you suggest? Unit 16. Exercise 4. Speech work. Which vowel sound is different in each line? Listen and see if you were right. 1. Much. Run. Can. Sun. 2. Lot. Hot. Note. What. 3. Many. Any. Plenty. Rainy. Four. Rough. Cough. Enough. Tough. Unit 16. Exercise 6. Listening. Listen to people from different countries giving their opinions about television in their country. Note what they say. 1. My name is Anna Maria and uh, I'm from Italy. Well, in my opinion, on Italian television we get uh, too many quiz shows and uh, they're quite boring. Um, we also get uh, too much sport, especially as far as football is concerned. And the trouble is that uh, I don't particularly like football. I'd rather have um, something different like ice skating or basketball. Um, the other thing is um, foreign language films. Um, we always have films that are dubbed and um, I think uh, it's a great loss to miss the voices of actors. We have too many soap operas repeated uh, every day, twice a day, uh, and uh, again they're quite long and boring and often last uh, for years and years. Two. My name is Susan. I'm from the United States. Um, I think there are too many channels on American television and too many advertisements. Um, I really like comedy shows, but I really don't think there are enough of them. There are probably too many soap operas, which aren't very interesting, really. And I enjoy foreign language films, but... Uh, there just aren't enough of them. <laughs> Sometimes there's too much violence on the shows, but it depends really what you're watching. Talk shows. Sometimes they have interesting topics, but sometimes it seems you have too many talk shows which don't have anything to say, really. <laughs> Unit 17, Exercise 4, Listening. Listen to a doctor talking to a patient about insomnia and answer the questions. Come in. Do sit down. Ah, what's the problem? I just can't sleep at night anymore. I don't know what to do. I feel so tired all the time. Do you take any exercise during the day? No, not really. Well, the first thing you should try to do is to take some sort of exercise during the day. Maybe walk for 20 minutes or so. Hmm, I see. 
Then you should try to relax before you go to bed. Make a hot drink, watch television, have a bath, and then go to bed. I usually have a cup of tea before I go to bed. Is that all right? No, you really oughtn't to drink tea or coffee late at night.、Oh. They both contain caffeine and it keeps you awake. I see. What about sleeping pills? Well, I really don't think you need to try sleeping pills yet. Unit eighteen, exercise three, speech work. The following words all contain the ow sound, as in aloud. Listen and repeat them. Aloud. Now. Loud. Crowd. How. House, brown, out. Unit eighteen, exercise eleven. Listening. Listen to Ranjit and complete the sentences about what she is and isn't allowed to do. My parents don't mind if I wear English clothes, but I'm not allowed to cut my hair short. Or wear it loose,、mm-hmm. and of course I'm not allowed either to smoke cigarettes or to drink alcohol, so I can't go into pubs or anything like that. How old are you? I'm sixteen now, but when I go to college, I'll be free to do what I want. Unit nineteen. Exercise one: Reading and listening. Josh is talking to some tourists who have just arrived in Holland. They're on a coach from Schiphol Airport to the centre of Amsterdam. Good morning. My name is Josh Kuma, and I'm your travel guide. Welcome to Amsterdam. I hope you had a good flight from Britain. Now, just a few bits of information for you. Don't worry if you can't speak Dutch. Almost everybody speaks some English in Amsterdam. Most instructions are usually in four languages, including English. About tomorrow's program, can we meet outside the hotel at 9:30 a.m. for our trip to the Van Gogh Museum? Please don't forget to bring your tickets with you. A word of warning: as in any big city, be careful of pickpockets. Make sure you don't take too much money with you when you go out. Now we are just coming to the Royal Palace in Dam Square. Unit nineteen, exercise two, speech work. Where is the main stress on these warnings? Listen and repeat each warning twice. First quietly, and then more loudly. Watch out. Watch out! Look out! Look out! Be careful! Be careful! Preview. Units twenty-one to twenty-five. Match the text with the photographs. Then listen and see if you were right. One. It's a beautiful garden. You must be keen on gardening. I am, but I don't have a lot of time to spend on it. Two. I wonder what the weather will be like this weekend. According to the forecast, there may be storms. Three. What's that? It's seaweed. It looks a bit strange, but it tastes delicious. 
for? If that's Mr. Miller, can you ask him to call me later? Yes, okay. Five. Can I help you? Yes. My aunt asked me to pay her newspaper bill. Her name's Claire Taylor, 201 Walton Street. Unit 21. Exercise 1. Dialogue. Listen and answer true, false, or possibly. How are things with Lisa? Fine. She's just come back from Scotland. Apparently, they had a heat wave all week. <laughs> That's surprising for Scotland. I think I might give her a ring next week. Perhaps she'd like to have lunch with me one day. I'm sure she'd love to, Mum, but she might not be here. I think she's going to Ireland next week. Goodness. When is she going back to Australia? I'm not sure. She may try to get a job here in England for a while. I don't mind. She's no trouble. Good. Oh, look at that sky. I think we're going to have a lovely autumn. <coughs> Unit 21. Exercise 6. Listening. Listen to a member of Greenpeace talking about the possible effects of global warming. Note two things he predicts. A lot of people are talking about global warming nowadays as if it's already happening. Do you believe this is true? It's difficult to say that it's happening now. There are a number of strange weather patterns occurring, like the six hottest years have occurred in the 1980s, and 1990 is the sixth. And there have been very strange droughts and floods and tropical storms all over the world. But this could be part of the natural cycle, or it could be the beginning of the greenhouse effect. And what sort of effects do you think this will have in general? It's very difficult to prophesy what happens when the world's climate starts to go mad. We think that there may well be floods, uh, that large areas of coastline will be flooded, and that means that millions of people may lose their homes. In addition to this, there are severe ecological problems. When the world heats up as quickly as the world scientists think it is going to, then the world's forests won't be able to stand the temperature change. So large areas of forest will die too. And we feel that uh, agriculture may also suffer too, which means that millions of people might starve to death. And if the world's temperature increases as much as we're told it's going to, then there's no guarantee that we will be able to feed the world's population. What about animal life? In terms of animals, animals may suffer more than anybody else because their natural habitat will probably disappear and they would, they would find it more difficult to exist when their habitat disappears. Thank you. Unit 22. Exercise 1. Listening Dialogue. Listen and complete the dialogue. By the way, someone phoned you last night. His name was Angus. Oh, no. Not Angus. Who's Angus? Oh, just someone I met in Scotland last week. Listen, if he phones again, could you tell him I'm out? That's not very kind. Oh, I don't care. He's very boring. <laughs> OK. Well, I'm off to work now. If you've got time, can you buy some bread, please? OK, I will. Have a nice day. And you. Bye. Unit 22, Exercise 4, Speech Work. Listen to two ways of saying the same sentence. 
Which do you think sounds more friendly and polite? One. If he phones, can you tell him I'm out? Two. If he phones, can you tell him I'm out? Now repeat these sentences. Try to sound polite each time. If you're back early, can you buy some bread? If you're back early, can you buy some bread? If you have time, could you make lunch? If you have time, could you make lunch? If he's early, can you give him a cup of tea? If he's early, can you give him a cup of tea? If my mother calls, can you take a message? If my mother calls, can you take a message?